Hey everyone, Grandy here. Well, Land Manus 2023 was still fresh in my mind, I wanted to do a quick behind the scenes video, just going through some of the production aspects of the event. We changed quite a bit from last year. I think uh, last year we spent, or at least me and Tom spent 90% of our time on broadcast. This year we wanted to reduce that a lot and I think it ended up being about two thirds of my time and Tom managed to step back quite away from it. Um, so we wanted to simplify everything not only from a setup standpoint, but also from a running on the day standpoint. Less time was dedicated to it and the setup was simplified for it. So I thought, just for those interested in, in broadcast hardware and software, that I'd just go quickly over what we used on those fronts, starting with the hardware. So this is our production setup in diagram form. And uh, feel free to pause the video and just have a look over that if you want, but I'll explain each bit of it briefly. Blue cables are display related cables, so we've got HDMI's coming out of my PC, display port going to my 4K monitor. This is the Porter HDMI splitter, which is just HDMI duplicator, very simple. That had HDMI going to the 1080p monitor that was basically just opposite me for the casters. And then we had a fiber HDMI that Tom brought, uh, which needed to be slightly longer because we wanted to go around to the back of the hall then back out to uh, the projector. And then you've got Mel's GH4 with the mic HDMI to HDMI into the Elgato. That was going USB in. We also had the Behringer mixer, the 1204 going in by USB. And then we had XLRs from the RM30T, which is the wireless set, the BPHS ones, which were the, the headsets. And then the jacks from those headsets went into the headphone amps, which took an output from headphone output on the, the mixer and I also put a headset or a headphone from there that I could use whilst on the production desk. And then we had this 3.5 millimeter line out from the PC going around the back to a split cable which looks a bit like that. It's like 3.5 millimeter one end and a split one on the other end. It's not a perfect cable but it definitely does the job. And then a stream deck which was very handy on the day. In terms of how that looked in the venue, I've got a few pictures that I can show. So this is all, everything plugged into the Behringer. The TLP had this nice little setup on top, so we had the short cables going to the back there, which were quite nice. The headphone amp, the Elgato, stream deck to the one side, Mel's GH4 there. Cast headsets and the Behringer. And then, yeah, the USB out from the Behringer on the back. And then we had the bird dog up in the balcony as you can see and this is a picture from Sunday so some parts were already packed away in fact all the wireless stuff was already packed away by then one of the cast headsets gone and the uh, cast camera has gone but you can sort of see the vague layout and then the projector was over here so the cable went sort of around the back here so yeah that's how things were laid out in hardware form so now on to the software side of things. As mentioned, we put much less time into the preparation and setup for this version of Land Manus. Um, last year we did an entire custom HTML, JavaScript, Node CG solution for the drafting, which I didn't want to have to go through and update. Um, so actually we settled on a very, very simple, if not little known tool for broadcast at least. It's actually a UX design tool called Figma that we used to power pretty much all of our graphics um, but also go through that the nameplates and a few other things as well so let's start with Figma Figma is a wonderful tool for UX designers it's got some really powerful features and uh, the main one that we took most advantage of other than components are properties so I set up a bunch of uh, individual pieces of various bits of our drafting and series UI and use them as variants and then you got the components for all the individual sieves, all the individual maps and even parts of the schedule I use for this as well. Piece them together into what I labelled as designs. So this is the design for the draft. And when we click on we can see some of the properties that it has. And in fact I'll click straight into the implementation of it. Um, so you can see that I've put various pieces in here, player one map choice, which is sort of the 
uh, left hand side here so that map can change to whatever map we want fortify clearing why not and then player two map choice I moved everything into properties where I could so I could change these quite quickly on the fly and all we did I had a little uh, plugin that I made called nearest frame export and I just went to the nearest frame and told it to export it which I then just pointed towards the folder there we go, the draft image, and I overwrote it. So anytime I updated the overlay, I clicked the button, overwrote the file, and then OBS picked it up and immediately displayed the new file. That's just what OBS does with the images, which is very, very handy. So that's all it was. So we had a drafting overlay, and as you can see, as mentioned, some of these things were in properties here, but a bunch of them were just individual elements. So entry left, that's top left entry there. You had a type, this one's snipe, pick ban, and so it just changed between them. And then you could pick an emblem, which was just swapping a component around, and then the name. So anytime somebody picked something on the draft table, I was frantically typing this in, switching the sieve, and then saving and exporting. Which was just about quick enough for our needs. I did do some tests to make sure I could do it quick enough, and it was just about if people were taking a, an okay amount of time. If they were a really quick draft, then I wouldn't have been able to do it. But for the most part, I kept up, thankfully. But yeah, so a fresh one of these for each of the series and just pumping it out to a file. Same with the series overlay. Very similar ideas, uh, I think. So do I have any properties up here? No, I've got properties on the scores element for the names and the scores. And each of the, the games has its own component with the sieve whether they want it or not. So you can see like the highlight going on in the background there and which map it was. So I was just going through editing these, exporting it. And equally, when they used to sieve on a map, I was going to the sieve track and hiding civilizations to show just the available ones for whatever next map might be coming along. So we use this for all different kinds of graphics. We also use it for the schedule graphics. And so each element was again another schedule entry with a picture we had an image, um, which was yeah, a bunch of these images used. Then it had this active or not, which gave it a lovely little shine to show which was happening now, as well as times and stuff. So again, we just exported this whenever we wanted an update. And then the two mini events across the weekend had their own exportable pieces. And so that's what we used Figma for. And yeah, a last minute one slapped together. So that was basically all of our graphics. If we look at uh, our OBS setup itself, obviously the PTC cameras aren't there. In fact, maybe I can put the draft ones back in just so you can have a look. So we had this camera switch which had caster cam and PTZ. And so some of the buttons on the stream deck were to hide or show caster cam on top or hide and show the video ninja feed. Um, so this was a feed I took, just pulled in from Video Ninja. Very useful piece of software if you haven't heard of it before. It's a browser-based peer-to-peer video sharing app, which you can connect from your phone as well. You can use your camera on a phone or share screens into it. It's very, very useful. So that was our camera switch. We also had camera actions. These were just PTC actions from the PTC controls plugin. And so we connected to our PTC from here and that had access to all the presets. Then these could call certain presets, although obviously you can't show that now because I don't have the PTC connected. But uh, some of the buttons on the Stream Deck would, for example, I think the Schedule button would call this action and it would sort of show and hide this action very quickly and that would make the camera recall that preset. So part of the camera control was through PTC actions and part of the control was through the, uh, the actual keyboard controller itself. Then you've got our individual uh, scenes for custom images and the handbook even, which I don't think I actually used on the day. Uh, the game scene, uh, the schedule, series, and again this is just an image <laughs> which OBS pulls in every time it changes. Draft. And yeah, that's pretty much the OBS setup. This just being a basic uh, 
a yeah, set of images. The text uh, was in the lower bar for the countdown. This was pulled in from Sheets.io. This is a little tool I used for updating text and the timer. So if we had a five minute timer, we could just start that. And in theory, yeah, that's just display and we could pause it, reset it, whatever. So that was kind of handy for in between breaks. The other thing I want to show was the lower thirds. This was very interesting for me. I'd never done it in this way before, but Sheets.io can not only give you a timer, but it pulls down from Google Sheets. So if I were to open up our spreadsheet, you can see that we've got names and tags of all the various different people that were involved throughout the weekend. And then we've got this left, middle, right. It's got all the different names in here with their uh, tag information V lookup. Um, and there's also a none option to, to hide it. So if none, that displays nothing. Otherwise, it displays this. Oops. Um, and then this one was again a similar lookup, looking up whatever's here in this area. And then I had this flip left and right, which just moved the left and right between them. And what this ended up doing, so if I just set this to auto update, and I'll set this one to boo, why not? So we've got Big Walk on the left, boo on the right, and Daisy in the middle. So when it came to OBS, these just ended up being text sources. And we just used show high transitions. So high transition is a slide, so the entire group slid out. And then the show transitions were on each of these four individual things, which again were just slides. So that's how we did the nameplates. I made one and then duplicated it, changed the um, files they were pointing at. So again, Sheets O file 723. I had like a config set up for which cells to look at in the spreadsheet. And uh, yeah, I pulled it down, put it in. And the only other extra bit was that we put in a uh, bounding box. So if I show you that. So that size there, we just set up as a bounding box. And no matter how long the name was, it would always fit within the, the overall container. So again, these were on the stream deck under a folder. So we had like a folder to go into and then it had left, middle, right, which were just show and hide sources. And it's show and hide, show and hit uh, these three groups. So it made it very easy to move in and out and a spreadsheet to update who was being displayed at any one time. And I believe that's just about it. Last year, uh, the previous year, we had like a bunch of extra stuff. In fact, I do have the diagrams for that that I can show you. Much, much more complicated. <laughs> um, all these pieces had to fit together exactly, so I had to figure out exactly how many extenders I needed in various points this year. Everything was so close together that it didn't really matter. So we had like Ethernet extenders going over to projector on the far side. We had the extra two PCs and the power needs and the Ethernet needs there. We had the extra two PCs for the practice PCs we needed to consider. Um, so many different pieces. And a vision mixer, because we had the caster camera, which was over here, the stage camera, which was over here, and a roaming camera, which was SDI camera with like a shoulder mount that we had throughout the venue. Two of which, like this camera and the roaming camera was replaced by the NDI camera, which was up in the balcony. And then we just had the caster camera, which was right next to production. So like the, the amount of things we managed to strip out from this is incredible. And just goes to show, like, once you've done one year, the setup can be streamlined quite a bit when you are not trying to go all out. Uh, so, yeah, much simplified from this year, and uh, we were much better for it. So that's basically it for the, the tour of the production kit and software related to it. Hopefully it's been useful. Any questions on it, just fire a comment in the video description or ask me on Discord. It's quite easy to find me. My tag is just Grandy. And uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes of how some of the, the streamy stuff to work. And I'll see you next time.